Hey everyone, this is Steve Chase from Sequential Solutions and this video we're going to talk about QuickBooks Online and what to do if you're a small business owner that receive uh, checks. So we have these problems with these checks here and often we get so busy working that customers who happen to pay us with checks, we um, probably don't run out to the bank right away. And um, there are, there are some powerful solutions to avoid taking checks. So I, I definitely recommend if you're not on QuickBooks payments where you can automatically uh, receive payments through ACH, that's the preferred way to go or credit card. But if uh, you're in a position where you are going to the bank with checks, we are going to um, learn how to do that next in QuickBooks online through this tutorial. The key is to understand what undeposited funds are. Undeposited funds are going to be kind of a temporary account where you've recognized that you've received payment from your customer to close off an invoice. And you're going to wait a period of time until you actually physically drive to the bank to make the deposits. Okay, and it happens to be if you have two or more checks in any given time, the challenging part of reconciling your accounts is the bank most likely is just going to have one group number, the subtotal, what you deposited, but you might have three checks that equal $2,000 and the undeposited funds will be the way to sort that out. So let me go ahead and share my screen and share with you kind of exactly what um, we're going to be looking at here. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's start from, let's start with the clean slate of paper here. Let's just start off with clicking on the plus sign, which is quick create and click invoice. We're going to create an invoice for $500. Okay. And here's a commercial again for what I was recommending. I highly recommend that you turn on your QuickBooks payments because what I'm going to teach you now is not applicable. Okay. So if you are doing credit card payments from your customers and free ACH, that's the way to go. But we know that not everyone has that ability to do that. Okay. So, all right, let's go with $500 from Lisa Williams for a consulting gig. Okay, so a $500 invoice, all right. And we'll just say it's due on receipt and then we'll save and email that out there. Okay, this is my trial account, so let me just save it and not really send it, okay. All right, so that's the first one. Remember that $500 in accounts receivable, okay? They're gonna pay us later with a handwritten check. In the time being, let's add a $1,500 invoice for Alex, customer that we're working with. Okay, so at this particular point in time, we have two invoices, and if you ever forget what your invoices were that you just did, I can't remember if you did it, all you need to do is click on the Quick Create button, click back inside the form, this will open up a new invoice, but there's a nice little button up here in the upper left-hand corner that will show you your most recent uh, transactions there, and clicking on it would actually open it up to get to it. All right, how do we receive payments? Okay, so here's one way is to click on the receive payment command after you open up your invoice. Okay, now the default's going to be undeposited funds. So clicking on the check, I, I wanna just really talk a lot about undeposited funds, why you would use it. You're gonna use undeposited funds, again, when you're gonna be depositing several checks in any given day um, at the bank. If you're taking a mobile picture with your check and it's just a one-off check, then it's probably okay, just put it right in the bank account that you're depositing mobily. Okay. 
Okay, um, putting in the date. Keyboard shortcut for today's day is the letter T. Okay, to get that in, notice that we have the check here. And we're put, okay, undeposited funds. Just think of a, a desk door envelope where there's checks that you're recognizing that the customer is closing out their invoice, partially or all, and um, the money's going to just kind of hang around in the undeposited funds till we go to the bank. Okay, so save and close. Okay, so remember that Alex Johnson has a $1,500 invoice. Let's look at another way that we can receive a check from Alex. Let's say we get the check in the mail. Another way you could start your workflow is click on sales. We'll see in the money bar that we have one open invoice that we could click on. And that will take us to all the open invoices in just one click there. Another example is um, you could also... If you're back on all sales here, we could also we can also kind of look at these actions here. And anything that has an action here to receive payment, you'll see that it's open. So we can click receive payment. There's also the filter that we can look for invoices, open, any time frame, apply. And that would be another way to filter it out here. So we're going to click receive payment. It's going to be a check, handwritten check. Write down the number. Undeposited funds, leave it there. And notice it's tied off here exactly the amount that is working with here. Okay. So I'll save. Actually, let's say he just pays us. Um, I'm going to divide that by two, forward slash two, hit tab, and you can do a little math inside the payment here. Let's say he only pays 50%, okay? So we'll leave the invoice open. He's doing 50% down. Okay, now the status becomes partial, and you can see the remaining balance here is open, 750. All right. So if we were to look at the chart of accounts by clicking on the gear, chart of accounts under company. I want to share with you the undeposited funds. Now, a lot of people get in big trouble because they'll have it in undeposited funds and then they'll go to reconcile their bank account and they don't see it showing up in the register. So let's imagine uh, that we're in our register, our bank account register, and you're looking and you're looking for it and you're like, okay, there's gotta be a $500 check in there somewhere. Nope, don't see a $500 check there. It's like, oh man, what, where, what's going on here? So, the, uh, so they kind of just kind of force it. Yeah. Where there's an ad check, they'll kind of force it here with the deposit and they'll kind of just go, okay, I think the pay is Alex. Or actually, let's say Lisa, it's $500. And $500, and then we get to this account part and we're just kind of like, um, not sure what to do here. Sales maybe. And then save, okay? And that is danger right there. So now the books are gonna have $500 and misapplied and double the income, which is more taxes than what, are, what is accurate, so. The good news is when you reconcile the checking account, that can be discovered and avoided. Okay, so what we need to do next is we need to um, learn the proper way of going to the bank. We're going to the bank with our checks. How do we do it, okay? We go up to the plus symbol, and under other, we have bank deposit. That's how you take undeposited funds, group them together if necessary, and put them into a deposit during a certain day. So choose which account you're going to deposit the funds in. Put the day down. Okay, remember T for today. And then look at the checks carefully. Look at the check reference number, the amounts. Check each one that you're doing. So we're making a $1,250 deposit. And then when you reconcile the bank account, the statement's gonna 
match up nicely and it's going to organize it as a group setting. Okay, so what you need to be very careful here is the correct date. Um, especially if you're playing catch up and trying to go back in time, three months at a time, make sure you have the correct date so when you rex out falls within the period of the statement and make sure you have the correct bank account that you're depositing it to. And that's it. I'm gonna go to the bottom here and click save and close out. Okay. So currently we have the correct way to appropriate that income here. And by the way, if, there, if one of those sales forms, the invoices had tax on it, it's going to be done correctly. However, if the, that $500 here, we just did a straight deposit. If there was any tax that we collect from Lisa, that would be totally messed up how we did it there. Okay, so we can just go in and click this little split button to verify. Uh, whoops, I'm gonna click on, where did we go here? One time, edit. Actually gotta click edit to see it. And I'll just re reapply it back in here. All right, so let's go in and run a profit and loss report to show the mistake that we made when we made that just generic deposit in the register. But you want to avoid adding transactions in the register in the first place, by the way. Profit and loss. Okay. Okay. So here is the problem. You can see it, right? The problem is our profit and loss has $2,500 worth of sales. We know that that's incorrect. And I'm gonna click on that. And we have the 1500, 1500, that's correct. And also um, that's, uh, let's see here, am I having the correct date here? The deposit right here, that's that's incorrect here. That is totally incorrect here. I'm, I'm not sure about the dates here, why we're not seeing. Oh, that's right, actually, that's right, yeah, sorry. This is wrong. This deposit, the invoices are correct. This deposit here, the accounts receivable is correct. This deposit here is wrong. So I'm gonna click on it, anywhere on it. This will open up where we kind of, remember we kind of forced it here and it's not even connected to consulting in the first place. So if you want to delete this, what we would do is we click more, then delete, delete that. Okay, and now um, we are on track for the proper, there's two invoices and that is the proper uh, sales report. We're not over $500, over estimate, over, over uh, doing that $500 sales there. Okay, so just to recap on what you learned, we learned if you're gonna be accepting customer checks, handwritten checks, and you're gonna wait to go to the bank with several of them, the best procedure is to put them in the undeposited funds when you receive payment. You can receive payment at any time by clicking on the plus sign, receive payment. If you click on a, a customer that has an open invoice, for example, Alex uh, Johnson has $750, you would um, choose the check method, undeposited funds, and here we have a 750, I'm gonna type 750 to close out that invoice. And anything that's in undeposited funds, you've got to remember to go visit the undeposited funds when it's bank day, when you're depositing the checks there to help your record help your records stay on track here. Okay, as I save and close that, the final step will be, if you're going to the bank, plus bank deposit, just to show you one more time where that 750 is gonna show up here, and we wait to do action when we go to the bank with this and perhaps some other ones as well. Hey guys, I wanna thank you for watching. Hope this was helpful for any small business owners out there that are looking for further assistance with your bookkeeping, 
I'd be happy to help, happy to discover if um, we would make a good fit working together with um, managing your QuickBooks and helping you with your cash flow. Um, for more videos, I've got lots of resources at my website, sequentialsolutions.com. Um, just type forward slash blog or books to see some of my uh, favorite books out there. Thank you guys. Have a good day.